welcome everyone. I'm Denise with 2020. In this series of videos, we're discussing how to do some of the things you see in the renderings that were entered into the 2020 Visual Impression Contest. In this video, I'll show you how to split a background image across multiple windows like you see in this design. There is a website called ImageSplitter.net. It's free to use, and you're able to go out here and actually upload images that you want to apply to those windows. So our first step here is to upload the image. So once this image is uploaded, you'll notice I can convert and resize, I can crop it, but in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the image. So when I select Split Image, I'm going to determine how many rows I need and how many columns I need. The way that I'll determine that is basically looking at the rendering. You'll notice I have four windows. So I'm going to need to split this into four. So let's go ahead and switch back to the browser. So I'm going to do one row, and I'm going to do four columns. Okay, so as you can see right here, it's going to split it into those four images that I'm going to need to um, place into those windows. When I select Split Image, it is actually going to save a zip file to your system, and you're going to be able to open up those images and um, add them to your visual materials and size them accordingly. So let's just go ahead and say OK here. Now I've already taken the time to extract these and actually save them. So basically what you're going to see, you're going to have 0 through 1. They're just JPEG images. Put them on a desktop in your file, in a file folder, whatever you need to do, and simply extract them. Okay, so here they are. Now what do we do with these once I get them? We're going to add them to your visual materials. So going back to Visual Impression, I'm going to load Visual Materials. And as that's loading, let me give you a little tip here. When I put the windows in, I obviously had to size these. So in order to size them, I needed to go to my Room Activity and go to my Side 2D. Now I don't know how often people do this or if they understand that this is um, how we work with windows. I notice a lot of times when I see um, renderings that have been done, there's a standard size window that comes in. They leave it at that standard size, and I often think that they do that because they don't realize that they can resize them. So when you bring that window in for the first time, you can choose your width very easily in your 2D view, but the length of that window is uh, easily manipulated from your side 2D. So when you go to your side 2D, and I click on this, you'll notice that if I move a window, I click on that window, and if I move up or down, it's actually resizing it. So that is how you change the length of that window. So right now I've got um, 134 inches. My width right here is 72. Now this information is important because this is how you're going to size that image to fit inside of this window. Another little tip that I want to give to people is if you're working with a wall of windows, put that first window in. Size it the way that you need it. And then if you'll notice in the lower, uh, lower right hand corner, there is a duplicate button. So instead of bringing it in four times and resizing it, all I did is place the first one, select the duplicate, and duplicated it three times. So I have four equally sized windows basically. So let's go ahead and go back to our 3D view. Go into one of the um, color palettes. I've already brought them in just to save us some time, but the way that I would do this, just so you know, is I'm going to click this little plus sign. This plus sign is going to allow me to select the image file. So go, if I go out to my desktop, grab our first image. When I open up that image, it's going to show a preview of it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to classify it. So normally what I do with my images is I can e I either make them miscellaneous or wallpaper, okay? So let's just say I'm going to do a miscellaneous, and for me it's just going to be a background. Now this is where you're going to set the width and the height of this image. So I know that my width was 72, and the physical height of this was 136. Let's go ahead and save it. Now once I have saved the images, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to oops, the visual impression image. Let's go ahead and look at this first window. So I'm going to select the first window, and I'm going to go to Materials. When I select on Materials, I'm going to see uh, the frame, background, anything that we can do with this window. But what's important to us at this point is palettes, because the palettes are where we're going to be able to see the uh, images that we brought in. 
this is my image one. Okay, tips. If I do not uncheck this box, what's going to happen is it's going to take that image one and apply it to all four windows. So because we can't span, we need to be specific to which image goes in which window. So we're going to start with image one. So there's my first image. Window two. Once again, making sure we have the box unchecked to not apply to all windows. And we're going to do our third or fourth one. So obviously, as you can see, I did one, two, three, four. So there we have our beautiful English setting outside of this window. It looks as though it's spanned. We very easily split this image through the image splitter, so it isn't difficult to do this. And it looks very nice whenever you place it inside of a window. Now I'll just do a quick HQ just to give you an idea of how it's going to look. And we're good. It really gives depth and life to your renderings. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for your time.